Thank you. Thank you for the music. Thank you. Thank you so much. I always say thank you for the music. Normally, you don't have to say it. To cut the music, we have some moves to do in stand-up comedy. We have to do this. <laughs> But with my face, could be some misunderstanding. <laughs> the last time I did that, my uncle was in the crowd. I did this one. Which one? This one? Tell me. <laughs> I do it right now. I stopped. Oh, sometimes I got some weird reaction. The other day, a girl came to me after my set and she said, oh, I saw you on stage and really, uh, you really don't look like an Arab. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was like, maybe I look like an Italian, a Latino or something. She said, no, no, it's not like that. Um, <clears throat> you don't look like an Arab, you look, uh, you look friendly. <laughs> well, here we go. Thank you. Well, I've been uh, learning English for um, six, seven years now. Um, don't get me wrong, uh, I went to school, but if you studied English in a French school, you don't speak English. This is, for, it's a fact, you don't. <laughs> And so when I discovered that, I, 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 was, I wasn't able to speak English, so I went to London to be surrounded by English people. And I, I was trying just to speak with people. So the first dude I, speak to was, uh, I spoke to was a, a taxi driver. So I started to talk about my favorite topic. So Ricky Gervais comedy. I was uh, Ricky Gervais, you know, uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, you know, Ricky Gervais. Good, Ricky Gervais, good Ricky Gervais. The taxi driver was like, mm. oh, uh, uh, uh. my only argument was, uh, 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 Ricky Gervais, uh, Ricky Gervais. So at the end of the trip, my accent was so bad, I realized he understood British Airways. This is how my <laughs> English was bad. So, so I'm, I'm cool. I'm really happy to be here in Switzerland. I used to live there for uh, 12 years. And I love it. You guys are so chill. And uh, now I live in Paris. It's a totally stressed out, stressed out city. Uh, I understand why. I was in the subway in Paris. And there's uh, a pole in the subway. And it's, it's very tempting to make money out of it. Like, you want to dance like this. It's very tempting. But it's just, you have to grab it because you don't want to touch, to touch the stinky people around you. So you have to grab it. My piece of advice, grab it here, okay? Just here, not here. It's very slippery, dirty, you don't want to touch it here. Here or here, okay? And sometimes the whole bar is covered by hands. Hands, even here, no like guy waiting. Like, hands, you cannot park your hands. So I cannot uh, grab the bar and here, close to my face, the hairiest hand I've ever seen in my life, okay? The guy got literally a different haircut on every finger. So I was like, oh, amazing. <laughs> I was really disturbed by the hand. So what I did, another tip of advice, I started to blow with my nose discreetly, like. <laughs> to disturb him. And he started to scratch his hand like this. <laughs> Now I'm in a game with the guy, so. <laughs> and uh, I want him to let go of the bar and I will do whatever it takes, okay? So I started to do things like, Still holding the bar. I said, what the fuck was this guy? Starting to, to, to see his face, but there's too many people between us. And he showed me his back like this, in this position, very disturbing. And I was like, fuck, I can't see his face. Then I realized something. If I can't see his face, he can't see mine either. I can't do whatever I want. <laughs> I can't see my face. So I got the hand just right there. My heart started to race a little bit, and I did this. <laughs> Bingo, I win the bar. <laughs> yeah. Take some balls to do that. Well, now I'm going to share with you a very, very intimate story that I share only with my closest friends, okay? So now I need you to be like my friends. That's right? Okay. I, I'm sure. I'm sure I can trust you. <laughs> so the thing is, it was my first week in London. I cannot speak English. I was uh, in the subway. They called it the tube in London. It's stupid. So I was... <laughs> I was in the tube, I was trying to catch a conversation around me, and I cannot understand a thing. So four French women came in the tube. tube. Okay, tube. Tube, not a tub, it's a tube, okay? <laughs> not the same thing, I know. Uh, how I knew they were French, because French, when we are abroad, we think that nobody can understand us, so we speak very loud. Now, mais sans déconner, je te jure, like this. So, oh, they're French, I can't understand what they're saying. So. At one point, they were starting to talk about me. So now I'm paying more attention to what they're saying. Like they're talking about me. 
They were saying good things like, ah, oh, too cute. They were talking in French, but I'm translating like, hey, too cute, the guy, I'm too cute, too cute. I was flattered twice. I was flattered because they found me cute, and I was flattered but obviously they thought I was British. Like, even me, in my behavior, I started to act like I'm British. I was like, oh, like this. And one of the girls said, uh, you know what, ladies, uh, what happened in London stays in London. I'm gonna talk to the guy, I don't care. I'm gonna talk to the guy. Now I got scared, okay? Because if I answer in French, it's going to be very awkward because I heard them, they knew I heard them. So, and if I speak in English, uh, the whole train's gonna say, well, he doesn't speak their language, he doesn't speak ours, so what the fuck was this guy? Nah, cannot speak English. So she came in front of me and she said, uh, excuse me, I'm um, <laughs> lost, I don't know, uh, directions, uh, lost. And I was like, uh, what can I do? I don't know, something flipped in my mind and I impersonated the British accent with no words in my mind. So it's pretty easy, like if you, knew, if you know like four words in English, at uh, the time I know what, not, Twitter and uh, British, okay, you take those words and you just drop the T. It's like, what, it's not, it's on Twitter, right on pick up, I'm British, right on the left. <laughs> so, yeah, it was my, <laughs> yeah. Their English was so bad, the girl thought I was British. And I ended up spending the afternoon with her. It was uh, no talking, we were just like that. Sometimes I just say like, Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, I was her guide, so Piccadilly Circus. And uh, we had some beers and at one point, she was cute. I was like, I'm gonna make her pregnant. Like I was, I'm very romantic. And uh, <laughs> take some beers and, and took some time, maybe two, three hours drinking. And I was, maybe I'm gonna marry her. Like, like, and then I realized that if I'm gonna marry her, I have to say that I speak French. But it's really, after three hours, you cannot say, en fait, je parle français depuis le début. It's really, <laughs> you cannot say that. So, but I got a plan. What I'm going to do is we're gonna get married in a country that uh, neither speak English nor French, okay? We're gonna learn this new language together and it's going to be the language of our love, okay? So the night came, went to her, yeah. <laughs> The night came, we went to her, uh, to her uh, hotel room and uh, we make love and uh, I fucked her. Man, I fucked her hard. I mean, we're sweaty and everything. And uh, she, <laughs> she did something I don't like. She made me come in my belly. I hate that. I, I tell you that because I will always remember this one time I almost came on my face. Like the girl was like that. I heard the come and the pillow. Like, <laughs> I froze. Uh, imagine, imagine you. You come in your face like... Uh, the first thing I would do is... Uh... Man, you have to try one day, like, it's the perfect opportunity to do it. Like... The second thing I would do is to look at myself in the mirror. I, I, I need to check that, like, holy shit, like... No. <laughs> My relationship with myself would be altered forever. Like, well, uh... Plus, I got a witness, I have to kill her, so now it's... Uh... So she was jerking me off. I, I'm scared. I, can, I cannot speak French. So I was all right, 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 like this. I want her to put her head in between my dick and my face. I, mean, I was like, no, 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 no. But happily for me, there's two types of volcanoes, okay? The explosive one and the effusive ones, okay? I got the effusive one on my belly. So I got this kind of disgusting lava on my belly. I was like, oh, no, no, that's okay. It's my own cum. I can handle it, okay? It's okay. Someone else come? No, I can't. Like one second and I melt uh, immediately. But it's mine. Like, to be honest with you, uh, I slept with it sometimes. Like, sometimes, like, you jerk enough, late, you're drunk, oh, I sleep. Well, yeah, no, don't bother. Yeah, we all do that. We all do that. Girls are like, no, we, guys, we all do that, okay? So, I got, the, I got the cum on my belly like this. She stood up to go to the bathroom. And I was so, look, I was so relaxed, so chill, that the French came out of my mouth, okay? and not in a good way. I said, I'm gonna say it in French first and then translate it in English. I said in French, Tu n'as pas des essuie-tout? Like, <laughs> which means do you have some all-purpose napkins, okay? I saw in her eyes that <laughs> we won't get married. And then it's over, <laughs> we won't get married. And someone asked me, why do you ask for all-purpose napkins instead of toilet paper? So it's a piece of advice for all of you guys, okay? 
No, it never used toilet paper on our dicks. It sticks, it's painful, okay? Thank you very much, this is my time. Thank you, it was a blast. Thank you, guys. Bye.